Okay, today we're going to prepare a class one uh, cavity preparation for amalgam restoration uh, on tooth number three six. And as you can see here, this is our outline. It bifurcates a little bit here around the distal cusp and it's almost like an M shape. The burr that we're going to use is the 330 burr and the length of the head of the burr is about 1.5 millimeters which serves as a good reference for us because our cavity should be between 1.5 to 2 millimeters which gives us enough bulk for the amalgam restoration so that it would have uh, enough resistance against fracture. So to start off, we're going to, to prepare three depth cuts in the central uh, distal and mesial pits. We should try to hold our hand piece parallel to the long axis of the tooth then we'll connect those bits moving around the cusp and go towards the buckle goes and then we'll go. And this is our outline. Let's see what we have here. Okay. So the buccal and lingual walls should diverge occlusally to give us enough retention for the amalgam restoration because as we know it does not bond to tooth structure. And if you look to the sh at the shape of uh, the 330 burr, if we hold it parallel to the tooth structure, it would, it would actually give us that convergence. Now we're going to widen our cavity a little bit. The width of the cavity should accommodate uh, the smallest amalgam condenser and it shouldn't be more than one third of the intercuspal distance. If it's more than that, then the weakened cusp should be evaluated for coverage. I'm trying to go, to go around the cusp so that I wouldn't undermine them. Okay. All internal line angles should be rounded so that we don't have areas of stress concentration. The pulpal floor should be flat and perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth so that it would give us good resistance against the occlusal forces. Of course, the mesial and distal walls should diverge just a little bit so that we don't end up undermining the mesial and distal marginal ridges because of, because of uh, the shape of the enamel rods, rods at that area. Okay, I'm just trying to round up some of the sharp areas that I have. Okay. 
we're almost done. I think I need to just widen it up. Put it here. Of course, when you're trying to smoothen your walls, and for fi the final just finishing of your cavity, you should use the low speed hand piece, which unfortunately I don't have here. The cable surface margin should be a 90 degree butt joint so that it would give us enough bulk for both the amalgam and enamel so none of them would break under a high occlusive forces. And that's about it. This is our class 1 amalgam cavity preparation.